not been reached thus far um, in the senior or the junior recurves. And we're going to be seeing the competitors coming onto the field here. And it's looking like the senior team, not the junior team. No, this will be the senior team, the women's recurve team, and it's the bronze medal match pitting Russia against Italy. Russia will be on target one, and Italy will be on target two. They'll be shooting from 18 meters, right? 18 meters or 20 yards, whichever uh, system of measurement you want to go with. Um, both of these teams have really experienced shooters on them, uh, as we can see here. And there's the Russian Federation, Natalia Erdinayeva, Kusina Parova, and Anara Jan Barasova. They defeated Mexico in the quarters, 228 to 218, and then lost to J Japan, 228 to 226. So they will shoot today against the team from Italy, Gwendolina Sartori, Elena Torneda, and Natalia Valeva. And of course, Natalia Valeva, a very well-known name in this sport. She's been around for as long as I can remember, and she's been at the top of her game for as long as I can remember. I don't know how she does it, but uh, for her to do this for as long as she has and to be competing at the highest level that she has been competing is just simply amazing. Uh, team Russia here has um, the tallest girl on their team is uh, a junior. I, well, either that or she just came out of the junior ranks because I remember seeing her at Junior Worlds this past summer. But team Italy uh, will be shooting first, and um, I mean, the shooter that they have on the line right now is fairly new, but. I have no doubts that she's prepared, and I know that Italy, Italy has a really good mental game. And as you can see right there, she's got a really strong shot to start off her team, and uh, it's got to be it's got to be really good for them just to know that you know we've got a really good lead. Gwendolina Sartori with a ten to start things off for the Italians, and another ten posted by the Russian squad. No, that's uh, still Italy. Oh, excuse that's, uh, me. That's right. That was. Uh, Natalia Valeva, this is now Elena Tanetta. Tanetta, 24 years old. And three tens to start off for Team Italy, which is an awesome, awesome start. And now Team Russia, all they have to do is just, you know, focus on their game and focus on how to do their shot properly. And we can hear their coach. I'm not really sure what he's saying, but uh, I mean, they're going to be out here to win. Sort of a little slip up here for, um, for the first archer. And it, it's it, the funny thing with indoors is you can't blame, blame anything on the wind. So anything that's outside the 10 kind of gets blamed on you. And you have to reevaluate your shot and know what you've done to make it a nine or whatnot. We are inside the climate control arena outside. The, we're at the back of the South Point Hotel and Casino. Here on the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, the two nines for the Russian squad to start off with. And they need a 10 right here to stay within two. So unofficially, Italy leading by three after the first three arrows. As you can see, um, there's a variation of the size of arrow that each archer is using. Um, Right now we're seeing an X10 or a really, it's, it's a very thin arrow made by Easton. And it's usually meant for long range outdoor competition. But a lot of archers have opted to shoot these arrows inside because of the quality, the, the pure quality that the arrows do give from shaft to shaft. Um, but it only, it only offers um, one drawback and that is that in this competition, if you touch the line of the higher scoring ring, you get the higher score. But with these thinner arrows, if you're not close to the ring, then it's, as you can see right there, it's not going to get you the higher score. So we have the three straight tens to start off with, three straight nines for the Italian team. And 57-27 here in the first end. And now Team Russia. Three with tens a chance will to make come back, yeah. Yep. There's the first ten, so she's uh, centered herself. She's using the thin arrows, but now we can see Jan Barasova here using fatter arrows. It's an Eastern X7 arrow, and what that does is if you just touch that line, again, you get the higher score, so put it anywhere near that ten ring, and you've got a ten. But unfortunately, that's about two millimeters out side of the 10 ring. Doesn't look like she's very happy with that. And it is a game of millimeters, not inches. Exactly. 
I tell you, Erdanieva, one of the more experienced shooters on this team, despite her age. Ranked number one in the world back in August of 2007, now ranked 17th, and she finishes with a nine. You see, it, you see the score, 57-55, Italy breaking on top early on in the first end. So a two-point lead is not impossible to come back from, but Russia start, has to start shooting more tens. Uh, that's the only way you can win this, in, this indoor competition is by tens. Um, sometimes you can get away with nines when you're shooting outside, but here, it's it's a game of not missing the 10 ring, and that's the biggest difference between outdoors and indoors. But it's far less see. forgiving, isn't it? Exactly, so any small mistake here can result in a nine, which, believe it or not, one single point can be a really big difference between you know first or second, or the bronze and fourth, right? So you can see each team here just trying to calm each other down. I know that when we're when Team Canada is shooting on, on my team, we're just trying to focus on our own game, <laughs> be nice and comfortable, nice and relaxed, right? Uh, you can see Jan Barasova going through her form right there on the <coughs> screen. <coughs> so it's, um, it's a really good way of practicing your mental game and knowing that you're going to be a solid shooter and that you can really do you can really do your shot really perform it under pressure and it's all you it's nothing else uh, external that'll affect you well the italians reached this bronze medal match by beating the georgians 230 to 223 in the quarterfinals then they tied team usa at 225 but lost the tiebreaker wind up here in the bronze medal match taking on russia and after the first end it is a two-point lead for the women from italy Ms. Prova shooting first uh, if you noticed a little earlier her coach was yelling at her to get back off the line for the team round, you get two whistles for a 10-second warning, kind of, that you're going to be shooting next. But in that 10 seconds, you are not allowed to be on the shooting line. You have to be behind the one-meter line. And again, with the person who's on the line here, they have to be fully behind the one-meter line before the next archer will step up. So there's a 10 with a line breaker, right? You can see that the arrow is definitely touching that line and therefore in. So with what happened with uh, Perova at the beginning is uh, when her coach was calling her back off the line, if she had shot her arrow, it would have been a red card arrow because she was out of time. She was on the line too early. So she, w she got a yellow card from the judge, which made her have to pull back off the shooting line. Italy's up now. Italy with a two-point lead after the first end. And they start off the second end in good shape. Valeva with a dead center 10. That's a beautiful shot. I'm um, pretty sure she's used to doing that all the time, so it's no surprise to her. She has competed on three different national teams, the Russian squad, the Moldova squad, and Italy now, and has won Olympic medals, and now... Going for a bronze in the indoor circuit. For the team round. Nine points. Although that was, uh, although that was on the line, her arrow was still fat enough to catch that line and give her the higher score. So luckily for Elena, uh, that was uh, still a good enough shot to give her a nine instead of an eight. Nine points, about five millimeters outside of the ten ring. Now the Russians might. Uh, are probably getting a little bit more frustrated and wondering where all their tens are going. But um, I know that in this situation, all you can really do is relax and just focus on doing your shot properly. Ten, ten points. Shot properly done that time. Shot was held a little bit longer than I've uh, seen her shoot normally, but still, she can. any good shooter out there can still make a bad shot, but make, make it a ten. So that's when you see the experience and the skill coming in. Ten. Strong finish for Russia. So 56 points right there. Could be a 57. We see an 8 asterisk for the third arrow, which means that it could be an 8 or a 9. Um, so upon closer inspection by the judges, we'll determine if that is an 8 or a 9. Sartori so was on the gold medal team in Torino last summer. Also picked up a silver medal at the 
fourth stage in Shanghai with this team. So almost 20 seconds left for Miss Tanetta to shoot her last arrow, which is a good average of time per archer. 20 seconds per, uh, per arrow for each archer is about a good, um, a good um, distribution of time for each archer. Uh, you'll see some teams running the clock a little bit more close to the wire. Some other teams will be a little bit, give themselves a little bit bigger of a buffer which is uh, nice for some teams, but uh, I mean, the 20 second deal is a good thing. However, if she does shoot an arrow outside of that 20, uh, outside of the allotted time, then your highest scoring arrow is deducted from the target. So hopefully we won't see any of that today, but if that uh, is the case, then you'll know why. A little bit of an adjustment period, isn't there, Crispin? Uh, all week long, you and the rest of the arches have been shooting in the exhibition hall. Mm -hmm. Far different setting here in this yeah, arena. Like yes, this is, uh, I think, in my experience, the first time I've ever seen a, an archery competition in a rodeo arena. <laughs> but this is uh, really showing off the American pride of what the, what the uh, United States is all about. We are here in Las Vegas in the South Point Hotel, and from besides the, the 64 bowling alleys. And I am serious, I, I saw the 64 bowling alleys. 64 bowling alleys and 16 yeah. uh, movie theaters. 16 movie theaters, and I hear a ton of horse stalls and places to, to house horses for the rodeo. So this is definitely a really good showcase of American pride here. Well, a great place for the archery world to come and watch the World Archery Indoor Championships. There's the contingent from Russia looking on as their team has fallen behind now by three arrows, 115 to 112. The Italians winning the first end, 57-55, and taking the second end, 58 to 57. And they now lead by three arrows. Not insurmountable, but tough to come, come from behind for the Russian team. And as we can see, Russian, the Russian team is shooting first because they are the, the team that is trailing. So whichever team that has the lower score has to go up to the line first. It's a rule. Kind of puts a little bit more pressure on the higher ranked team. But right now, it's Russia is just not... Not dialed in right now. Exactly, yeah. They're, they're chasing their arrows with their sights. And it could just be because they're a little tense. They're probably feeling a little bit of pressure. They're the first people up for the matches for the day. So that's just out. It is a fat arrow, but it's, it's not touching, unfortunately. And in my experience, any low arrows like that is either her sight isn't moved down far enough or she just didn't complete her shot. Ferdinayeva with an eight. It's unfortunate. Sometimes the eight out the top of the target means that she's put a little bit too much power into her shot. Mm -hmm. And Which you can see from the body language and the expressions on their face, the feelings of the Russian team right now. They're, not, they're not happy. No, they are not. In danger of falling even further behind. We're down by three after the second end. And Team Italy trying to put them away. It's a very good shot from Natalia Valeva. Always a solid shooter and always nice to watch. And now Tanetta, 24 years old, picked up a bronze medal with her team in Shanghai last year at stage four and a gold medal in the Dominican Republic. Was on the gold medal team at the indoor championships in Poland back in 2009. Unfortunately, Tanetta just shot an eight, which kind of gives Russia a little bit of breathing room, but still they're still trailing by four points, which is tough to make up, but not impossible. Ten. There's another 10. That's an awesome chance. shot from Russia. Nice That's and what strong. they need. They need three straight tens to give themselves a chance. Mm -hmm. Jan Barisova. Ten. 10 points, dead center. That's a very beautiful shot. She can see it in her body language after the shot, and she knew that was a strong shot, and that's exactly where it was supposed to go. So two tens in a row for Russia. 
10 points. On you can see line. on this computer yeah, screen that it barely. is going through the line. They might call it a 9 asterisk, the which they did scoring, but a uh, closer inspection is going to show that it's actually a 10. So for the first time, the Russians put a little bit of pressure on Team Italy. Sartori with her ten. second shot of this third end, and it's a 10. It's very good. Valeva shooting second in the rotation for Italy. Interesting. Valeva has not shot a 10 on her second arrow. We can see that in the target, off on the, the middle target, on the right strip of targets, that none of her arrows are in the 10 ring, and I'm not sure why that's exactly occurring, but uh, it would be a big help to Team Italy if Valeva can start shooting 10s on her second arrow as well as her first arrow. Thirteen seconds left on the clock. Now ten. Better to take that time though than to take a rush to shot. Exactly, and that is why she did that. The ten, even though it's on the line, it still counts as a ten on the scorecard. And taking your time, getting a good shot off, is uh, something really important that Tanetta has learned, and she's applied here right now. And it's why Team Italy is still in the lead. That's why you go to all these tournaments, get all that experience. So when you're in that kind of a position, you know, I've got 13 seconds. I don't have to take this shot right now. Exactly. So a tough spot for the team from Russia. There you see it, 167 out of a possible 180 points. It's possibly yeah. 168 points. Um, and with that nine True, asterisk, with that nine asterisk. It, it's probably going to be called a 10 uh, with what we can see here. And uh, we don't see a judge scoring the arrows on the target uh, or taking a closer look at that, at that arrow from our vantage point here. So. I'm uh, pretty confident that the arrow is, uh, in fact, a 10. Oh, 10. So at the very least, Italy maintains that three-point lead. Yes. After three ends, there you see the score 171 to 168. And it is a three-point lead going into the final end of this bronze medal match. So right now, Russia has to hope that Italy slips up a little bit, makes a few mistakes, and they shoot. They've got to shoot tens from here on out. They don't have any option. Exactly. No room for error for Natalia Urdinayeva, Lucina Parova, and Danara Yanabarasova. As they are down by three, heading into the fourth and final end. Here in the first match of the day, the women's recurve team bronze medal match at the South Point Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Parova to shoot first. Back in 09, her team took the bronze medal at the Indoor World Championships in Poland. That's a nine, just out again. She has not shot a 10 on her first shot. And like Valeva, she could start shooting more 10s, obviously. It's going to increase the score, but increase their chances of at least tying up this match. Ten, Ten points, definitely in. Good shot from Jan Barasova. Beautiful shot. And now Natalia. Points. Very shaky shot, but no tens on that target. It's going to be a tough one for Russia to get, but Italy has to do something really bad here for Russia to at least tie. But with the way Italy's been shooting, that's going to be uh, almost next to impossible. Ten. Beautiful so great shot. start. Great start for Italy in this fourth and final end as they vie for that bronze medal here in Las Vegas. Valeva ten. with another 10. Dead center shot. She's got a perfect target for her first shot. Now Tanetta, 24 years old. Just out. If she was shooting a fatter arrow, that would be it. But uh, she's chosen to shoot the thinner, long-range arrows. Higher quality, but again, no line-busting capabilities. Final three arrows for Team Russia. Let's see what they can pull out. Rova with a shot. 
10. And that is a 10. Yeah. Scored a 10. Scored a 10. It was tough to tell from a TV monitors, but um, we've got a good team working with spotting scopes to be able to zoom in on that arrow and give us a good, good indication of what it actually is. Ten. Dead center. Dead center. That's a great finish for Jan Batisova. Now it's a final arrow. Erdenyeva shooting this final arrow. Ten would give them 58 points for this end, which would be a great help for Russia. Ten points. Uh, so ten, ten points for the uh, young lady ranked 17th in the world right now, just 24 years old. And there's her actual arrow. That was the wrong target. For, unfortunately, but you can see that's solid, and Team Italy has to maintain a good score here. Uh, that won't help. It's, it's not. It's it's not bad, but they just have to be solid from here on out. Yes. This one's higher balance. I don't know. They had the three-point lead heading into this fourth and final end as Valeva lines it up and scores a ten. There's her first ten, final ten of the second target, her second shot. Big screen TV up there is not too big. It is for yeah. And yeah, the final big. shot Ready. of this bronze okay. medal match. Elena right Tonetta, she gets a nine, and Italy will take home the bronze from Las Vegas as they cash in here in Nevada. So hugs and kisses all around for the team from Italy, Gwendolina Sartori, Elena Tonetta. And Natalia Valeva, they got off to a fast start and really never ever looked back as Team Russia gave them a little bit of an opening early on, Crispin, and they took advantage of that. Yeah, unfortunately in the indoor ranks, uh, just a little bit of a lead can propagate into a much, much bigger lead by the end. But, um, I mean, Team Russia held in there. Unfortunately, it was probably good enough, but just a little bit too late to give them a little bit of an advantage over Team Italy, and this is what happens. Uh, but still a good good run for Team Russia, making it all the way to the bronze medal match by coming up against a really strong Italian team. And there you have it, the indoor world championship bronze medalists for the recurve women team. So Italy scores 228 out of a possible 240 points unofficially. And Russia with 226, so two point victory. But it was that early lead, those two points that they picked up in the first end, they picked up another point in the second end.